you've probably noticed that uh, when people are asked to list their favorite things in life, buying health insurance is not one of them. It is, look, I, I worked in the health field for many years. I know a lot about health economics, health financing. It's a nightmare for me. It's a nightmare for everyone, and, which is why, uh, number one, Parenthetically, perhaps it's why I support Medicare for All, but number two, it is also why I so much appreciated what our next guest uh, wrote about this. Hel Helena Olin, who's been on the show before, she's a friend. She is an excellent writer on financial matters. She is the author of the book, Pound Foolish, Exposing the Dark Side of the Personal finance industry. She has written for and writes for the Washington Post, among others, and she had an op-ed in the uh, New York Times recently called, Cho the headline was, Choosing a Health Insurance Plan is Not, quote-unquote, Shopping. Amen, first of all. Secondly, uh, and I know we don't write our own headlines, but uh, secondly, Helene, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you. And I just have to say, shopping and health insurance are so diametrically opposed to each other that when you know how when journalists come on TV and podcasts, you're supposed to be smiling at the camera. As you're talking, I literally had to force myself to keep smiling because I was frowning every as the more you talked about health insurance. It is such a miserable topic. So I just have to get that out there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, you, you I think in your piece, if I, rec I, I if I recall correctly, you you listed some of the things that are actually fun to shop. Yeah, when I go shopping at the mall, I get perfume samples and free chocolates. And when you go shopping at the mall, uh, well, I don't know how you feel about shopping. Uh, I have mixed feelings about it. But... I tell everybody I was brought up to be a Jap and I really like shopping. So you can take that for what it's worth. I, I think shopping's great. And I also should add, by the way, if you like internet shopping, it counts. That's still shopping right. even if you're not at a mall. I really like shopping at used clothing stores, but see, uh, see, see. I, I I just feel when I I've scored big when I get something like this jacket I'm wearing now. But um, but back I'll to business. I'll give you a good tip in L.A. when we're off the air. All right, okay. good. Uh, Hebrew women's uh, shops are very good in L.A. Um, see, I know my stuff. Um, okay. but uh, now let's get back to health insurance. Um, you quote both Republicans and Democrats. For example, Democrat uh, Jean Shaheen, Senator Shaheen, I encourage you to shop around. Uh, human Mercer saying this open enrollment, think of employees as shoppers. Oh, I hate that. Um, Me too. <laughs> why? I gathered. Why? Why is it wrong to describe the purchase of health insurance as shopping? Well, it's wrong in every way it can possibly be wrong, right? Shopping, first of all, is a voluntary activity for the most part, right? You do it when you want to do it. Um, it is not forced on you, right? Se second, most of us find shopping enjoyable. Polls do say this, right? Picking health insurance, not enjoyable. Third, the consequences of making a mistake when shopping are generally not all that severe, right? You buy the wrong cell phone plan, you've got the wrong cell phone plan. It kind of stinks, but it's not your life, right? Mm -hmm. Fourth and most important is the fact that when we say we're shopping for health insurance, we are taking something, health care, our own lives, which should be a right, and making it a consumer choice. And that, in turn, makes it seem like this is something that maybe you ha should have or maybe you shouldn't have. But it's not a right like it is in every other first world industrialized country. Only in the United States is it you know, something that's presented as something of a choice. And this, in turn, by the way, the l last thing is when things go wrong, if you say pick a health care plan that doesn't cover your the cancer drugs you need, you made a mistake and it's on you, right? right? And that in turn, one last thing, I mean, really, this is wrong every which way possible. It makes fixing the American healthcare system, which should be something like Medicare for all or some form of universal coverage, right? And instead it, it puts the blame for our high cost 
on each one of us, all 300 million plus of us individually, and makes us responsible for solving the issues involved in the American healthcare system. And as I said, blames us when we don't get it right, which in fact, it's impossible to do. Well, yeah, I mean, you make so many great points there, Helene Olin, and just to you know unpack a couple of them. Uh, first of all, people are can't possibly have the information they need to make a quote-unquote in informed decision. I doubt that trained actuaries are able to make an informed decision when open enrollment comes at their workplace or whatever. And uh, secondly, you're essentially, it's as if you had to buy clothes before you knew what size you are. In right. other, do you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I mean, you, you, it's predicting the future, right? On top right. of everything else, right? I mean, I outlined some of this in the article, right? You. You don't, the, the plans don't need to give you the, you know, the correct who's in the plan. They reserve the right to deny coverage after the fact, right? So that you can call them up and you can say, they, they could say, yes, you can go to the emergency room. Then they could look at the notes and go, actually, no, we take, we take that back, right? But the more, bigger point is you, to make sure you make the optimum choice, right? And let's leave aside the fact that it's impossible to make the optimum choice anyway, based on all what I just said, is you've got to know the future, right? How right, do I that's... know what drugs I'm going to be taking in 2018? I mean, I can right. make some guesses, but do I really know? Probably not, right? Not unless I'm a psychic. And those people are on late night radio shows. They don't really exist. I mean, this is not true. Right. So there's, this is just an impossible task. And this is why most other countries do universal coverage or some form of single payer. Yeah, and by the way, uh, this is, it's like, to, to, to take the clothes shopping metaphor a little bit, it's like going clothes shopping at a store that doesn't want to sell you anything. Because the fact is health insurance exists in order to pay for needed medical care. Insurance companies don't want to provide needed medical care. Uh, do you ever see, for example, an insurance company say, we're really the best insurance plan for cancer patients? Right, exactly. They don't want to serve you. They're, they actively try, in many cases, to avoid various patients. Um, in Medicare Advantage, for instance, there, the famous example is that for a time, for a period of time, um, they made the presentations, the government cracked down on this, so it's not quite as blatant as before, but they, they would do the presentations like up one flight of stairs, right? So if you were not healthy, you weren't going yeah. to the presentation for company X, right? Because you couldn't get up, if you had arthritis, you couldn't get up the stairs. Yeah, um, they're probably so, gonna start, if they hadn't made it illegal, they would probably be doing the presentations be, be behind those things that, those playground little tunnels that you have to climb through and then go up a ladder and, you know what I'm talking about for little kids. Yes. They'll probably yes. do that I mean, next. It's impossible. They, I mean, yeah. there's no way to make a reasonable choice in this. And to call it shopping simply dumps blame on the consumer when they get it wrong. So like the example I used in the art, one of the examples I used in the article was a woman actually asked Hillary Clinton about what she was planning to do to help people who on the affordable, who were buying insurance on the affordable care, on the affordable um, care act exchanges, because they were, you know, her insurance had all but tripled in cost, right? It had more than doubled. And Hillary Clinton, you know, said, I'm going to try this and I'm going to try that. But then she looked at her and said, but really, you should go shopping because your numbers aren't what I'm hearing from other people. Like, yeah. it was her fault that she was stuck with this humongous bill. I mean, it was absurd. I mean, presumably the woman wasn't getting subsidies, though that was sort of hard to tell because she didn't get into all her specifics. It's a long question series. But it was utterly ridiculous. And in fact, about the woman was quoting, I've actually heard. I mean, it was, I didn't think she had had a problem shopping. I think her options weren't particularly good. And again, it put the blame on her. Well, absolutely. And I think that, I mean, there are multiple dimensions to this, but let, let us not forget. I mean, first of all, I'm willing to stipulate, if you are, Helene Ola, that it would it's better to have the Affordable Care Act than nothing, which is essentially Agreed. That's yeah. absolutely correct. Having said that, the Affordable Care Act, many of its elements were initially uh, pioneered by right wing think tanks. And it is 
a horrible system. I mean, in the sense that, I don't know if you agree with that, but you know, I've helped my son, you know, a little bit uh, purchase on the exchanges. They're complex, they're cumbersome. You cannot quote unquote shop, but also the employer healthcare system, which we still have in place when open enrollment comes around. It's you know stressful for our, my wife and me to go through the forms and try to make sense of them. Uh, it is, uh, and it's not, you know, the, the, the products are overpriced for what they provide. And while subsidies are good, uh, it's never a good idea to, um, you're never going to get true cost efficiency if you're subsidizing the excess price of a bad product. So, I mean, I think it really speaks to the fact that while we have to defend what we've got, we really need a new system. Absolutely agree. I mean, the term shopping, I should say, encompasses both the Affordable Care Act and employer-provided health insurance, right? You see the term very commonly used with both. And to bring back your other point, in fact, the use of this term does seem to originate in some of the right-wing circles in the late 1970s and early 1980s, a point that um, I did not get did not get published in the Times. But in fact, this is when you first actually began to see it, when you first began to hear the initial concerns over medical costs running, um, you know, roughly double the rate of inflation, really start tracing back to the late 70s and early 1980s. And you begin to hear right wing economists and then eventually the Reagan administration using the term shopping, both in terms of insurance purchases and um, health care usage as a way of trying to shift more of the cost onto consumers so that they would presumably be more cost efficient when they used medical services, right? Um, again, this is something that's not really possible and I've deconstructed this in numerous articles in the past, but it's, the, it's basically the skin in the game fallacy, right? And this was a very deliberate attempt though to head off substantive other ways to attempt to get at the cost of health of healthcare in this country and to avoid ultimately acknowledging that the real solution to this is universal potentially single payer coverage and so what happens is after this term builds up in the early 80s it just slowly increases over time and it begins to become much more common during the first um, during Bill Clinton's presidency after the failure of his health care reform. And then by the early part of the last decade, you just see it constantly in terms of employer insurance being used. And then after the Affordable Care Act, it really just zooms upward. Right. But and, it, I think, and it points to the fact this is all, as we all know, the Affordable Care Act originated in the right wing um, think tank world. But it also, but, no, I, I, I agree with all of that. And by the way, when I Early on, when I, I was making the transition from you know financing and data nerd to pundit, if you will, I was put up on TV <clears throat> against a prominent right wing economist on this issue and consumer driven healthcare, as they call it. And I thought, well, this is going to be rough, and it turned out to be incredibly easy because I was able to say about single payer healthcare, I can point to thirty countries where my system works. Point to one where yours works. That, that's really good. I'm going to remember that. Yeah, right? well, please. Yeah. That's, that's really, please. really good. And I, the fact is, is you know, no, shopping yeah. hasn't worked, right? And what um, your point, and what your point is now, Helene, and, and, and that I, have, you know, the one word, and I understand why you wouldn't have used it in this editorial, but the one word that kept coming to mind as I read it was ideological. That this is shopping, quote unquote, is an ideological way to describe this ugly process, and the ideology of the right that you mentioned in its or early origins, very much so, but it was very much also, and is, I think, uh, very much also, or has been, the ideology of the centrist, if you will, uh, right. or mainstream Democrats, who, from Bill Clinton to uh, Barack Obama, who thought that you could, and a lot of the economists that work with them as well, who thought that you could really solve the problems with the wonders of the market, even though it is not a market in any genuine sense. Right, I mean, I hate using words like neoliberal and market-based economies, and I, because I think they just sort of turn off general audiences, but that is absolutely correct. I mean, it is this sort of imposition of the values of the marketplace over our individual lives, basically, right? That the marketplace can both you know, solve problems more efficiently than the government, but more to the point that we are 
less valuable than the marketplace. So when we say we're shopping for healthcare, we're ultimately saying we are supporting a system that values its profits and values the ability to make a profit off of us and our health over our own health. One, one last quick story, and then I'll ask you for a closing thought. I once, uh, as a benefits consultant to a very powerful CEO who kept proposing crazy, complicated ideas, uh, everyone else was afraid to ask him. So I, I asked him, I said, you know, excuse me, so what exactly are you trying to do here? And he said, I want to give the employees less and make them think it's more. And I feel that this entire shopping concept is another example of giving people less and making them think it's more. And that's my closing thought, but what's yours? My closing thought is that no one should use this term and we should call people out and you should say, select healthcare coverage, pick healthcare coverage, sign up for healthcare coverage but do not use the word shopping because even when you're using it innocently, you are supporting a system that functionally does not work. Yeah, or resignedly accept whatever crappy health plan, you know, you have to randomly select from a confusing list. Uh, right. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to leave it there. By the way, uh, giving new meaning to the term shop till you drop, uh, we're going to have to stop there, but Helene Olin, financial writer, author of Pound Foolish, and this excellent editorial, I, I uh, encourage people to look up Choosing a Health Insurance Plan is Not Shopping. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me on. And we will be right back after this. I'm Richard R.J. Eskow, and this is The Zero Hour.